The following footage is brought to you by WouldYouKindly.com. <laughs> the job? Killer is dead. We all got jobs to do. In the case of Mondo Zappa, it's killing and lovemaking. Not all at the same time, though. That would be just creepy and weird. The story itself, though, is crazy in that pseudo-51 grasshopper kind of way. You're a hired killer for the government, and you take on a series of missions. But not just any kind of missions. These targets that you have to kill are really strange, bizarre, usually monsters, or this guy named David who looks like King Midas if he was in a BDSM club. You look like a male model in a cheap underwear ad. It's up to Mondo and crew to assassinate these targets and find out who this really creepy David dude is, and for Mondo to piece together his past. We'll talk more about Mondo shortly, because there's a lot of controversy surrounding him in this game. The game goes into some weird directions, and it's all over the place sometimes. And I really like random. However, my only issue with the game's story is that it just doesn't seem to fill in all the pieces. There's times that you want to know more about the characters, and however, it just never fills you in. There are moments where you think, oh my gosh, they're going to talk about it, we're going to find out more about this person, It's and then they, they just don't. They don't. But other than that, it's crazy, over the top, which... You know, me, I love that kind of thing, and I know it's not for everybody, but if you like Suda51 games, then you'll really appreciate it. I won't say any more because it's just, just out there and you're going to want to experience it for yourself. Killer is Dead has an art style to die for. Get it? Huh? Killer is Dead? Die for? Huh? No? Okay. As a unique cell shading comic book noir look that just looks fantastic. The characters and the art designs are very unique, and some things are even really dark. The boss characters are definitely larger than life, and one of the highlights of the missions. Animations are really good, and it's really awesome watching the kills. It's very stylish, and of course, very violent. I was playing on the 360 version, and I did notice one downside, which was the screen tearing. That was kind of a complaint I wanted to bring up. It's not too major, but you'd notice it. The stages are varied, and some of the places you go look pretty unique. The voice acting is quite enjoyable, and it's very entertaining. There are a few characters that some people will not care for. Mika, for example, is your very definition of super hyper enemy girl. That girl will drive you nuts. She is just crazy all over the place, and some people will hit their head against the wall. This wine tastes like crap, so I'm going to make wine coolers out of it. What are, what are you doing? That ice cream's expensive. You're going to get the wine all over the carpet. Are you an animal? Were you raised by Lindsay Lohan? Get out of here with that. Now, for your purist, of course, you do have your Japanese voices, so there you go. And the soundtrack is really nice, too. It's got a weird mix of techno, classical music, metal. Some of it's just, like, remixes of different things. It's just really unique, and I think it fits the world. It's very catchy, and I love it. Before we get into what makes this game so fun, I want to address one of the many games that's causing quite a stir. The Gigolo Missions is where Mondo must buy ladies' presents and stare at them with x-ray glasses in the most creepiest way possible. So that way, he can get laid. Now, some people will be really offended by this. And I don't really feel that that's the point the creators are trying to make. Suda has stated that he wanted to make a really dark, or dark side 007, James Bond. And Killer is Dead kind of takes that to the extreme with Mondo. Pretty much, him and Bond are really just hired killers, who may care about the world at the end of the day, but... They're also pretty much womanizers, and they kill people for a living. Yet, Bond is idolized, and Mondo's looked at despicably, but Killer Z takes it at such a ridiculous level, it's really more parody than it is just trying to please some 13-year-old kid who'd buy this, and they don't really buy games like this. They usually play Call of Duty. No offense to anyone that is 13, and if you are 13 and have good taste, then great, great, awesome. But with that said... These missions you do need to do to get sub-weapons and items. If this is something that offends you, then, well, this is probably not going to be the game for you anyways. If you can look past that, 
There's a really amazing action game here. The combat is very fluid and you can upgrade and learn new moves. Evading your enemies at the right moment can get you an opportunity to do more damage with some rapid slashes. You have a move that also breaks enemy guards, which is very handy because a lot of these enemies do block. You also have a blood meter which can be used to fill up your gun arm and even one off certain enemies with a special move. For the most part, Killer is Dead is really deep. The only time it struggles is with the camera and it's just a small gripe. It's not the best thing in the world, but it's not the worst thing. Also, another thing I have a problem with is when games actually require you to hit a button at a certain speed. Now, my thumb is not the best in the world. I had surgery on the arm a long time ago, so my thumb is not the fastest thing in the world. But when I'm trying to use a controller and I'm trying to hit that X button as fast as I can, it's not fast enough, and I have to put the controller in my lap and slap the controller, I mean, why why do we have to have that? Can't, I mean, that's it, it, luckily it's not a big deal because it doesn't happen often enough. The only time you, if you need to revive with the Mika tickets and you have to hit X to revive yourself, or uh, during the David fights you need them, but other than that, it's not a huge deal, but still, it's a gripe I've had with games. Never, no one ever do this again. Ever. Other than taking on your main targets in the main missions and your random booty calls, you got various and unique side missions as well as challenge missions to test your skills. There's a lot of content here, and sure you can rush through the game and beat it quick, but it took me 8 hours of just playing around with it, you know, going through the campaign. You also have an item shop which you can use to buy stuff for Mondo and even presents for your lady friends. Simply, this game is just downright awesome. It's worth getting. If you love crazy action games, you're, you're, you're just going to love it. Uh, remember, first-run copies come with bonus DLC content, an art book, and a CD soundtrack. So I guess now, the review is finally dead. Like, that, that really, that line doesn't make much sense.